Hey folks, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over what you need to know and what you need to be able to do for the introduction topic of the Advanced Higher Physics course. Now, if you want to download your own free copy of the Learning Outcomes document that we're about to go through, then check out my website, mrmitchellphysics.co.uk, and you can download your own free copy from the Advanced Higher section of the website. Let's get started. Okay, so the SQA splits the introduction into four topics. So you'll see here that we have units, prefixes, and scientific notation. We then have uncertainties, and if I scroll down a bit, we have data analysis, and then we have evaluation and significance of experimental uncertainties. So let's start at the beginning and go through each one. So units, prefixes, and scientific notation. So it says here you need to be able to use SI units with all physical quantities where appropriate. So remember SI units are just like seconds for time and meters for distances and kilograms for masses and so on. Use units appropriately, including electron volt, light year, and astronomical unit. Now, light years and astronomical units might be a bit of recap from third year for you, but electron volts are new, and these things are going to be covered in later topics. But they are different units that you'll see, so you need to be able to use all of these. Next, you need to be able to use prefixes where appropriate. So these include femto, pico, nano, micro, milli, kilo, mega, giga, Terra and Peta. So remember all the prefixes, the only new ones for advanced higher you'll remember are Femto and Peta. So you should know all the other ones from higher level. Use scientific notation appropriately. So you need to be able to state your final answers in scientific notation, remembering to state your answers to an appropriate number of significant figures. And that takes us to the next point here. So it says to use the appropriate number of significant figures and final answers. The final answer can have no more significant figures than the data with the fewest number of significant figures used in the calculation. So if the fewest number of significant figures in your question is 2, then your final answer must be stated to 2 significant figures as well. And remember in my theory video for significant figures, we went over the 4 main rules to decide whether a number is a significant figure. Moving on, we have uncertainties, and it says know and use uncertainties including systematic uncertainties, scale reading uncertainties, random uncertainties and calibration uncertainties and it goes into a bit more detail on each one. Now calibration uncertainties were the only new one here, all the others were seen at higher level. So it says that systematic uncertainty occurs when readings taken are either all too small or all too large. This can arise due to faulty measuring techniques or experimental design. Scale reading uncertainty is an indication of how precisely an instrument scale can be read. Random uncertainty arises when measurements are repeated and slight variations occur. Random uncertainty may be reduced by increasing the number of repeated measurements. And lastly, calibration uncertainty arises when there is a difference between a manufacturer's claim for the accuracy of an instrument when compared with an approved standard. So we've seen all of these before in the previous theory videos. Next, you need to be able to solve problems involving absolute uncertainties and fractional or percentage uncertainties. Remember, fractional uncertainties are not very useful, so you maybe won't be using those very often, but percentage uncertainties are very useful and so are absolute uncertainties. So you need to be able to state uncertainties in absolute, fractional and percentage form and do calculations to work out percentage Percentages. It then says that you need to be able to use significant figures appropriately in absolute uncertainties. Absolute uncertainty should normally be rounded to one significant figure. In some instances, a second significant figure may be retained. So moving on to the third section now, data analysis, it says that you need to be able to combine various types of uncertainties to obtain the total uncertainty in a measurement. So this, remember, was using a square root where we had our calibration uncertainty, our scale reading uncertainty, and our random uncertainty. But remember, systematic uncertainty is not included in that square root calculation because you should be able to correct for a systematic uncertainty before doing the calculation. Next, it says to know that when uncertainty in a single measurement are combined, an uncertainty can be ignored if it is less than one third of one of the other uncertainties in the measurement. So that was our general rule, a key rule that you need to remember when doing uncertainties. Use an appropriate relationship to determine the total uncertainty in a measured value. So the uncertainty in our quantity WC is equal to the uncertainty in X squared plus the uncertainty in Y squared plus the uncertainty in Z squared, if you've got three quantities with three uncertainties. It then says you need to be able to combine uncertainties and measured values to obtain the total uncertainty in a calculated value using this equation. Know that when uncertainties and measured values are combined, a fractional or percentage uncertainty in a measured value can be ignored if it is less than one third of the fractional or percentage uncertainty in another measured value. And that's just a reminder about that general key rule. Moving on, you need to be able to use an appropriate relationship to determine the total uncertainty in a value calculated 
from the product or quotient of measured values. So remember a product is just timesing or multiplying two quantities together, whereas a quotient is just a division. So if you're multiplying or dividing, you need to use this equation here to combine your uncertainties and find the total uncertainty. Remember this means the uncertainty in a quantity W, for example, divided by W itself is equal to the square root of the uncertainty in a quantity X divided by X squared, plus the uncertainty in a quantity Y divided by Y squared, plus the uncertainty in a quantity z divided by z squared. Obviously you would have numbers in place of these letters. And remember that if we're simply adding or subtracting quantities, then we don't use this one, but we actually use this one instead. So we use this simpler form to find the total uncertainty. And next we have to use an appropriate relationship to determine the uncertainty in a value raised to a power. So remember if you've got a quantity raised to a power, then you need to use the power in the calculation to find the total uncertainty. So the uncertainty in a quantity w to the power of n, for example, divided by w to the n itself, is equal to the power n times the uncertainty in w divided by w. Again, you would have numbers in place of these quantities. And a few more for data analysis. So it says here, you need to be able to use error bars to represent absolute uncertainties on graphs. You also need to be able to estimate the uncertainty in the gradient and intercept of the line of best fit on a graph. And at this point, it's worth reminding you about the line est feature in Microsoft Excel, which can do a lot of this hard work for for you. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your project for advanced hire. Lastly, for data analysis, we have that you need to be able to use correctly the terms accuracy and precision in the context of an evaluation of experimental results. The accuracy of a measurement compares how close the measurement is to the true or accepted value, whereas the uncertainty in a measurement gives an indication of the precision of the measurement. To finish then, we've got number four, which is evaluation and significance of experimental uncertainties. So we need to be able to identify the dominant uncertainty or uncertainties in an experiment or in experimental data. So what this means is working out the percentage uncertainties and seeing how the percentage uncertainties in different quantities compare with each other. You also need to be able to suggest potential improvements to an experiment which may reduce the dominant uncertainty or uncertainties. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.